Hello there, it's Sev from Three Counties Motorhomes and welcome to the video guide on the Sargent EC328 panel that you can see here. Now there may be some similar uh, models that work in pretty much the same way. So if your model number isn't exactly the same, don't worry. Uh, I've sent you this video because largely the same functionality uh, applies. So with this panel, we have a series of four buttons here. We then have a display and then we have three buttons here. Now these buttons on the right are used to go up or down the pages of information and the enter or select button allows us to interact with any settings there that are available to be uh, changed or um, cycled. On the left here, we have four buttons for the main functions of the unit. Now I'm actually gonna, uh, in this particular vehicle, I'm gonna turn on the entrance way light here and turn off the camera light so we get a little bit less glare. Um, don't worry, this, the screen does light when we press things. So to turn on your motorhome, typically it's gonna be pressing the power button right here and this will turn on your leisure battery and give your motorhome power. Then we have a battery swap button, but I'll come on to that later. We have a button here to turn on or off the water pump in your vehicle. And uh, then we have a button here. And in this case, this one here is for an outside awning light. Now on the display, you can see the, what I call the, the, the first page or the main page is gonna be this one here that looks rather confusing, but we have the Sargent uh, panel model there. And we then have the software or firmware version number there. And then we have down here the time, AC for the indication that we are plugged into mains electric with this vehicle currently. And then we have the internal temperature. Now, if I press the down button, the first screen we come to here is the leisure battery voltage. Now, in this particular instance, this battery is currently on charge. So as you can see, it has a nice healthy voltage. Pressing down once more, we come to the vehicle battery voltage. Press down again, it will tell us whether or not our main supply is working. And then we have our fresh water tank and wastewater tank capacities. Now these are going to work in 25% increments. So once the, uh, what's the best way of explaining this? Well, basically, as it says here, 50%. What this is actually telling us is that this is more than 50% but less than 75%. Of course, if it was more than 75%, it would actually say 75% on the screen. So we are somewhere between 50 and 74% full of water. If this was to drop below 50%, it will then turn to 25% on the gauge. So reading the waste gauge, it says 0% full. This is actually telling us that we're somewhere between empty and 25%, okay? That's how these work. So always 25% increments. The next screen is our external temperature. And then we have the battery ammeter showing us the amount of current going in or out of the battery. Currently 6.2 amps going in uh, because we are charging. Uh, but of course, if we were draining, uh, this would be a negative number. And then we have pump select. And this option alongside the next screen down, these work together to um, basically choose how our water system is going to work. So let's quickly cover that. So some motorhomes may have a water filler point on the outside that has the ability to transmit power. There may be uh, electrical um, terminals in there that will allow you to transmit power to an external water pump. Uh, typically something you would submerge in a container of water. And this could be used either to act as your water system entirely or to use to fill up your internal water tank from an external source, which is typically the most common way. So by choosing the pump select here, we choose which water pump is going to be prioritized when it comes to moving water around the vehicle. And in this instance, we got the internal water pump selected. And this means that when I operate a tap here, for example, it's going to use the internal water pump to suck water from the fresh water tank out of the uh, tap. Pretty straightforward. Now, if I choose the next option, which is external, when I operate the tap, the internal pump is not going to operate at all. And it's only gonna be any externally fitted pump that we have mounted to the vehicle. So if we have a submersible pump fitted to the outside in 
a submer in a submersed container of water, or sorry, submersed in a container of water outside, then when I operate the tap now, it's going to suck water from that external container via that external pump instead. This is essentially bypassing the entire internal motorhome fitted uh, system. So the fresh water tank won't be used and the internal pump won't be used. Anything that we've got connected outside is going to be our water system. Okay. And then if we have both, it's going to uh, pump from the uh, fresh tank using our internal pump and be filling at the same time from the external source as well. So you can choose what water pump is prioritized. Now on the water tank fill option afterwards, this will work depending on how we have the pump set up. So with the pump set to external, leaving this on off means basically this external pump is going to act like our internal pump. So it's an on-demand thing. Whenever we turn the tap on, it's going to request water from that external pump and external source. However, if we then turn this to on, what that's going to do is immediately start operating the external pump with the aim of filling your internal water tank. So if you're just using your external pump to fill your water tank, this is what you would do. You would set external there and then choose water tank fill on. And then that's gonna start filling up your fresh water tank and you're gonna be good to go. And when it's done, you can just turn that to off and change your pump select back to internal. Okay. After that, we have the clock settings. We can set the clock there. To change the time, just press the enter button. We can choose the hour. So the hour is uh, 15. It's, so we've got to go there to 15, of course. And the minutes is 45. So we would set that. It's probably quicker to hold it down. Nope, you've got to press it every time. probably now 46 isn't it no it's still 45 there we go now that means the clock is now set um, alarm sets so we could choose an alarm time there choose whether or not the alarm is on or off and then we have the same for an event timer we can choose the uh, start and end times of the event and whether or not we're having the timer on and then we're back to the main screen so that is the sort of overview of how the control panel works with regards to all the screens lastly we have the battery swap now uh, with a motorhome 12 volt system, typically the motorhome can only be connected to one battery at a time. It's either going to be your leisure battery, uh, typically, of course, and that is also the battery that has access to the output from the mains powered battery charger. So if you're plugged into electric, the connected battery is the one that will receive your mains power uh, or mains recharge. And in this instance, of course, it is the leisure battery, uh, which is going to be the case 99% of the time. Now the battery swap is going to swap the connected battery, meaning that it will swap to the vehicle battery being connected to the motorhome, which means the vehicle battery will power the motorhome, which is, of course, uh, not what you want to do. Uh, now, the only reason you would actually switch the connected battery is so that, of course, the connected battery being, um, as I said, the connected battery is going to get the benefit of the mains power battery charger. So switching would allow us to allow, uh, have the vehicle battery, in this case, charge from the mains electric supply. So only press this button when your battery charger has mains electric power and is working, because then when you switch to the vehicle battery, as you can see, we've done that now, it immediately brings it up on the screen here. We have a blue light to show we've switched the battery. The vehicle battery is now on charge, okay? So always make sure you have a working battery charger and it is on and powered up with mains electric before you press this button. That way, when you switch to the vehicle battery, we're going to be charging. Even though the vehicle battery is powering everything, more energy is going in than we are taking out. Uh, so we are still charging. And you can tell that because we have a strong voltage on the um, display here. And also if we were to go back through to the battery ammeter, as you can see, we've got lots and lots of energy going in. If we were to see a negative number here, then switch immediately back to the leisure battery. Now, if you want to be extra safe before switching to the vehicle battery to make sure you're not going to drain it, when you are 
with this button not pressed, so therefore the light is extinguished, that means we're gonna be on the leisure battery. You can check the leisure battery voltage, make sure that's a nice high voltage, hopefully somewhere in the 13s or 14s. And then also check the battery ammeter while we're still on the leisure battery, and we should see a nice positive number there. That means the battery charger is clearly working, it's definitely doing its job, so it should be perfectly safe to then switch over to the vehicle battery and allow that to charge. So that's what the battery swap button does. So don't press it if you don't have mains electric hookup or if the battery charger is not working. Otherwise, that can be used to maintain the voltage in both of your batteries at a press of a button. Nice and simple. And that's the control panel. That's it, really. I'm Sev. I hope this video has been useful for you. And thank you very much for watching.